Welcome traders to another live market analysis session uh, with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me and you can see the tick mill welcome screen, if you just type a Y in the chat box, so I know that we're good to go. <clears throat> okay, so before jumping into today's material, I've, as always want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Uh, most importantly, with respect to today's uh, conversation, uh, the views expressed by me are solely mine and they are not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So for those that are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. Um, after I graduated from university, I left I, I, sorry, I joined a city uh, PLC consulting firm. I, uh, I left with some colleagues after a few years and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup uh, focused on C-suite executive search for tech startups. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets quite literally overnight and with university friends in investment banking and hedge funds, I decided to explore the markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500 or more appropriately day gambling. And after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, the beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six figure hit to my personal capital. I'd say this was gut-wrenching, sobering experiences and understatements. I had to really stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of developing strategies that importantly suited my personality. I researched, developed and extensively back and forth tested these strategies, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game and probably the most important watershed shift I made was from being a highly goal oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming more process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, from 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. And you can see the performance data on the screen. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, since 2010, I've also personally mentored hundreds of traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert, exclusively uh, providing market and trade analysis to what I believe is best in class online brokerage, Tickmill. Most recently, I've also been uh, retained as the head of trading and trader education uh, for a leading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. At FX CareerSwap, we're offering development and funding to retail trading talents. At FX CareerSwap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Now we're going to jump into the markets and take a look around and see where the next opportunity set is developing. Um, before I get going with the charts, uh, I've got a bunch of charts that I've uh, flagged here that I'm gonna run through. If you have any questions or you or there's a chart uh, that I don't cover that you'd like me to take a look at, if you can just wait till the end, I'll open up for a brief Q and A as uh, once, once I finish with, uh, 
with the charts that I'm looking at. Okay, so let's uh, let's get going here. So S and P 500. We're going to start with <clears throat> obviously the benchmark for uh, risk appetite, global risk sentiment, and we are trading up into uh, a pivotal area. I think at the moment, um, yesterday we tested this uh, 41.50 zone. Got a bit of a pullback, but we've since recovered that overnight. I'm looking for us now to certainly test into 41.67, which is this ascending trend line resistance. Now, something to bear in mind, we've got options expiration um, taking place tomorrow, where traders will be rolling out of the March contract into the June contract. This is in the futures market. And so that's likely to cause a bit of volatility. Um, and what I perceive may be the case, and we'll see how we, uh, we finish up on today's session, um, there's one of, one of, well, one of two scenarios that I'm, I'm watching, um, and both should provide an opportunity. If we roll over here, I'd be watching for a three-way corrective move back into uh, the 4,000 level, potentially 3960 uh, zone. Watch a bullish reversal patterns if that is the scenario to uh, set long positions. But I think more likely um, at this stage, given uh, the state of the market and the how the market's underpinned with this huge amount of stimulus and liquidity. I think what we might see is a, uh, is a run up here to test the 4,200 zone. We've got weekly range resistance at 4,222, monthly range resistance at 4,247, and then just above there, 4,290, we've got the yearly R1 pivot. So I've been watching this zone here for bearish reversal patterns, uh, especially if we get up into that area tomorrow and, uh, and we come in on Monday uh, looking a little weak here. I think that will offer an opportunity to play a corrective move um, into uh, into next week as we digest uh, as we digest the uh, options expiration action. Um, if we can get that set up, if we can get these uh, you know bearish reversal pattern in this zone, then like I say, I like to uh, to be short. I, I, in terms of in terms of the setup, I don't think we're. Uh, I, I'm certainly not anticipating any meaningful uh, massive correction at this point anyway. Um, and what I'd be looking for would ultimately be a, a wave three corrective move. If this is going to be our wave one, uh, two, and we're in our third wave here, looking for that extent, to extend up in here, then what I'd look for would be a, an equality type swing. Let's just see if we can measure that versus this swing here. So we'll overlay that like that. And then we will get our fifth wave here versus an equality objective from our wave one. So this is the type of thing I would, uh, I'd, I'd be looking for is, uh, is a move back, is a move up into this target zone and then a correction before we, uh, we take off again um, to the upside. So I'm, I'm, I'm essentially looking to try, I'm looking to fade this, this third wave high here if I can get the, uh, the price pattern confirmation um, and if, if, if we can get through this trend line resistance as the initial confirmation that we're heading up into this zone. So that's what I'm watching with respect to the S&P. NASDAQ, similar scenario here in the NASDAQ. I'm looking for us to test now up into, let's see if we get that trend line there. We've got this pattern here in the NASDAQ. We're in this ascending trend channel. So I'm looking for the NASDAQ to get up into this resistance area, 14,400, 14, 14,450. And again, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns here to set short positions to play for the wave four correction. Um, and then from there, using the same measuring technique, if, uh, if this pattern plays out, then we'll be looking to re-engage on the long side after we've seen at least a three-way corrective move to then target new highs up into 14,700. So those are the two index um, scenarios that I'm, I'm watching at the moment. We, we appear poised here to, to push higher into options expiration. And then I think we could get a, a bit of a pause, profit-taking pause. And, uh, and certainly I want to try and uh, participate in that before looking to realign with the, uh, with the bullish trend there. So that's what I'm watching with respect to the equity indexes. Dollar, 
So we talked uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, just at the start of April, about the seasonal tendency for the dollar to, uh, to kick in with a bit of weakness here. And that's what we've seen play out. At this stage, um, the scenario, certainly this is the equal weighted dollar index, is uh, it looks corrective. We can clearly define uh, the three waves here. Let's actually bring in the trend tool. Here we go. So A, B, you can see we're sitting just at the equality objective now. So if, um, if, this, if this move is to prove corrective, we'd anticipate that uh, the prices stall out here at this uh, 117 area. And then we'd look for uh, bullish reversal patterns to, uh, to look for long positions in the dollar. This is, uh, sorry, this is the dollar versus the Aussie, the yen, uh, sterling and the euro in equal measures. Um, and if we can, if we get bullish reversal patterns here, then the, the target on the upside uh, versus the swing low here at 111.17, the, the equality objective puts stuff at 120. So again, see how we, uh, how we come in at the back end on, on uh, how we close up tomorrow, because uh, one of the key factors to keep in mind is that the majority of, of these corrective uh, or corrective reversals, let's say, occur on, on Fridays and Mondays. So we want to pay close attention to how we trade into the, the start of next week because this correction could be over. Or we, uh, if we don't find support here, then I think we're heading back down to test the 117. Let's take a look at the DXY. <clears throat> Not quite as clean a pattern here in the DXY. Obviously, DXY is a, is a broader gauge, a broader basket, six currencies. Um, we test it. What I'm looking for now is really is we're looking at another test here of the 9130. We've got uh, weekly range support, 9135. So again, similar scenario here. If we can get down into this zone and get some uh, demand coming into the market, and certainly I think we can get back up and have a look at 9250. Um, but what I'd be thinking to myself at that stage is that this is the initial leg of a bigger corrective move uh, to play out and, and have us down testing support at 1950, uh, which is the monthly range support. We've got this ascending trend line coming in here just below 1930. So I pay close attention to the, the, the how this pattern, how, how we trade if we if we put in a base here, uh, if you can. If, Maybe you can look onto the four hour time frames and watch for a three, three wave corrective move into this resistance zone. And I think we then we might see another leg lower in the dollar. Yields have obviously come off from their, uh, from their highs here. Not a major, uh, major correction at this stage, more a, a correction in time than price. And, uh, and I still think we can, uh, we can see this looking for that, uh, that 2% test. Uh, all the Fed speakers and they are pretty much coalescing around this idea now of, uh, of certainly starting to think about tapering in terms of monetary policy. So we'll see how that uh, feeds fe fe into the yield. Story. Gold, looking, uh, we did, I was looking for a pullback into the monthly pivot here. We've got weekly range support, 1714 uh, to, to look for long positions. It, uh, it might be the case now uh, to start thinking about uh, fading, uh, sorry, engaging on a breakout through these prior highs at 1760, looking for this test of the 1800 yearly pivot from below. Silver, similarly now, uh, it looks, I was looking for the symmetry swing resistance versus this last corrective swing here to, uh, to contain this upside. Did it did on the first test, but we're looking uh, we're looking pretty bullish here. So when we get that scenario develop, we now have a new swing that we can measure to give us some targets if we can take out these highs. And uh, and what we'd be looking for then would silver to trade up to twenty six forty five on a close through this high here at twenty five fifty five. Crude oil. Similar scenario here. Uh, now that we've taken out this swing high, then we can change the uh, measuring objective here for crude because we what we've potentially got with crude now is an A, B, C correction. You can see we're getting a bit of supply here at the equality objective, 62 
uh, 75. Now, if we hold here and we get uh, we get a decent bearish reversal pattern, then we still have got the potential for us to trade the broader uh, broader corrective pattern. So what we'd be talking about here would be this scenario where we correct, 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 and probably do uh, an impulse move now down to test this ascending trend line support, the equality objective versus the current swing high, if this plays out, that is, would be 52.67. And from there, we'd be looking for long positions to, uh, to take out this wave three high at the $68 Mark. So uh, we'll see if this pattern is going to play out. Certainly, uh, from my perspective, I'd want to see a close back through the daily BWAP coming in at 6070 in terms of crew for this pattern to uh, to materialize. Copper talked uh, in previous sessions about the bullish underpinnings for copper based upon uh, stimulus and this uh, this idea of massive infrastructure pro programs in the US, whether or not that's all gonna pass, we'll, we'll still have to see, but certainly the market wasn't prepared to take copper lower and we're consolidating in a bullish triangle pattern here, potentially breaking to the upside. And if we do take uh, take this upside movement, if we can get if we get a close here through trend line resistance, then what we can anticipate is something like this to play out with copper up into, um, into this trend channel high here. Um, $4.80. So um, see, if, see if we can get the close, see if we get the retest and some type of pullback into this area to act as support at 4.15, then that could set up the pattern on the long side for uh, copper. Bitcoin, obviously with look, uh, the Coinbase IPO yesterday, uh, taking out its, uh, its reference price at the open, goes a little bit weak into the close, but I think it's kind of finding support um, in advance of the open. So that's all basically Bitcoin take out its prior highs at 61.79. I'm looking for Bitcoin now to test this ascending trend line here. Uh, weekly range resistance 66,138, uh, 67,365. And the thing I'm paying close attention to is this uh, glaring divergence that we're getting. And I, I, I sense um, that that could set up for a little bit of a washout here in terms of positioning, shake out some of the weak hands. But I, where I'd ideally love to uh, to look again at Bitcoin would be around this trend line support that comes in at 50,000 level here. Um, that could be the base then for uh, for the next big leg higher. And ultimately, I think we get up and, uh, and take a look at this ascending trend line up into the 83,000 zone. Uh, so that's what I'm, I'm watching in Bitcoin. Um, I don't trade it as such. I have a, I have a cash position that I've been holding since last October, and I would certainly consider adding to it if we got a test into this area and got some, uh, got some demand coming into the market there. That would be uh, certainly an exciting opportunity. Dollar Yuan, uh, continuing to correct here. We've got an open upside objective at the 664 level uh, as we hold 647 as support. Uh, just consolidating at this stage, but uh, that's the upside objective uh, versus this swing low. Dollar yen has pulled back, correcting this advance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can expect this now to, um, you know, when we get eight swings, more likely than not, we're going to see 11 swings. So eight, nine, 10, 11, and that will give us the equality objective here at 113.06. So again, I'm watching as we trade into this support zone here, we've got weekly range support, 108.40, uh, 108.50 was a decent level, uh, on, acted as support after the initial break. So if we can get bullish reversal patterns here, I'd like to take a look at uh, the dollar, uh, dollar yen on the long side, targeting this, uh, this 113 equality objective. Swissy. In line with the other dollar majors has uh, has come back got a bit of demand coming in yesterday as we retested the yearly pivot from above let's see now if we can potentially get up and put in uh, a corrective leg here three wave pattern back into this 9360 area i think that would be an opportunity on the short side to uh, to play for a deeper corrective move to uh, to play out in the swissy dollar cad uh, been in and out of this one um it's it's looking like we we are going to, are going to roll over here now certainly as we trade below this uh, the five period vwap 
that sets up a move or oh, this 122.50, the descending trend line projected sending trend line support and uh, the monthly range support at 122.65. Euro um, had been long uh, a couple of times in this in this swing up here and taking some some nice profits. What I'm thinking is now that we're traded, we've we've actually traded into um, a symmetry swing resistance. So if we look at this last corrective wave here and we overlay it versus our current correction, you can see to the tick almost we're, we're stalling out of it here at 119.91. It's been a lot of trader, or oh, sorry, desk chat uh, through the, uh, the investment banking trading desk with respect to the potential for a very large double no touch uh, option in play uh, from uh, from a Chinese fund, uh, that means that they get paid up, they get paid on the option as long as price doesn't trade 120 or above or 117 or below. So it's a it's a it's a bet basically on uh, on consolidation. And, uh, and certainly, as we got up towards 120 yesterday, there was a talk of some big offers in the market as the as that fund are obviously going to have to hedge their position to try and protect uh, sorry to try and protect it. Um, and we're seeing a bit of a stall out here. So if um, if this sets up and we get a bearish reversal, I think there's a trade there to get a retest of 118.50. And then we'll see if uh, if the bulls are serious here in terms of taking this higher. Uh, that would give us, uh, yeah, that would also be the 50% retracement of this move. And then I think we could look for a test of the 120.18 descending trend line resistance. Euro yen, uh, that's starting to sort out. So this this double top area I've been watching, um, and you can see we've got momentum divergence, and uh, we just haven't really rolled over. Every time we've traded down into this one twenty nine eighty area, bids have, have come into the market. So I'd want to see that the you know I'm going to see these tails taken out on a closing basis, and then you can start to think about getting a move certainly down into the trend line support here, 128.47. Whilst we hold the bids here, there is still a chance that we could get up into this ascending trend line resistance before that correction takes place. So it's going to be pivotal to see which way we break here out of this uh, 130.68 and uh, 129.59, because I think that will give us the next 150, 150 200 pips either way uh, in opportunity with the euro yen. Euro Swiss. This is one I was watching just shy of my, my target zone here. And uh, we've since seen a nice move to the upside. So if you were in this, you certainly should, uh, you certainly should be risk free. Uh, whilst we hold support here now, I think we can start to think about getting up into the top side of the ascending trend line, certainly monthly range resistance on 11.75. Euro Sterling. So what I'm thinking now with respect to euro sterling, if, uh, if this is our wave one, two, this is our three potentially completed here, nice divergence. So what I'm looking for now is a three wave corrective move. So ideally we see something like this, and then the target for the correction, the initial target is always the symmetry swing. So the symmetry swing, obviously what I'm referring to is this wave, uh, too high overlaid versus our three low. And you can see that's what gives us the target. So watch for a correction here. Um, and I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns to get in on the long side in terms of uh, in terms of Euro Sterling there to play for that second leg higher. Euro Aussie, uh, nice outside rejection yesterday from that wave four resistance. We're taking out the trend line now. So I think there's scope here for the uh, Euro Aussie to trade down um, into, certainly back into the lows here, 152.70, probably a bit of a bounce there, but then ultimately I'm looking for this wave five quality objective versus our wave one swing here would have us down 149.94 in terms of the Euro Aussie. Euro CAD. Similar scenario, really. We, uh, we've got this equality objective achieved versus the this last corrective swing. And if we get a bearish reversal today, you can see these tails, plenty of supply. Then I think we've got a wave five to the downside to think about in terms of the uh, Euro CAD at 145. So just want to see that confirmation. Got a little trend line in play there that it'd be nice to see this go 
on a closing basis to just add some downside momentum into the Euro CAD. Similar story in the Euro Kiwi, but note, we've come into a third test of this trend line here and we haven't been able to break it. So for me to, to get interested in this, I, I'd wanna see a close below the trend line uh, to, uh, to be looking at short positions, but we're holding for now. Sterling, I've, uh, this has been a frustrating one this week because there was a, a great pattern set up, but I think some of the shine has left Sterling. Um, that premium about you know the vaccine rollout and the positioning that we've seen, the big positioning shift, has seen a little bit of uh, of the shine come off Sterling, and we're, we're, we're struggling really to get to ignite on the upside momentum. So I've been in and out a bunch of times on this this week. Um, Whilst we hold here, uh, whilst this monthly pivot acts as resistance and the descending trend line, there is still a chance that we uh, we take a look at 135.44, which is the equality objective versus the 140 swing high. So if we can't get through here, we, we get bearish reversal patterns, then I'll, uh, I'll flip on that and I'll look to the, the short side in terms of sterling. Sterling yen sitting at this trend line, uh, hasn't been able to uh, to do anything meaningful as of yet, but uh, I tend to watch for a potential head and shoulders top here that could develop in uh, in Sterling Yen. Otherwise, we uh, we could take it out, take the trend line out here, and um, and still hold the monthly range support, hold this price support, and get that uh, that scenario to develop in terms of a uh, double top and a, an ABC corrective move to play for Sterling Swiss. Uh, similar story here with Sterling Swiss. There's a pattern that I like to, uh, to track, and it looks like it might set up here, where we have that final swing into the high, and then we have a symmetry swing as the first correction from this downside. So what we look for would be a move like this into that symmetry swing resistance to set up the next leg to the downside for the correction. Aussie has had a, has had a nice lift. Um, this week on the uh, on the commodity on the risk on commodity, <coughs> so, uh, sorry, the risk on sentiment in markets uh, often supports these commodity currencies. But look where we are. We're sitting right at now uh, symmetry swing resistance, and we also have let's measure this. A, B, C, we're just in the zone there now. So I'm gonna be paying attention here, similar scenario to the Euro coming into these, these areas and, uh, and start to see a bit of, uh, bit of bit of some chips being taken off the table. And we just have to see if that turns into a reversal because versus this swing high here at 78.51, we still have an open downside objective at 74.67. So again, okay, just gonna pay attention and thinking if these markets, the, if the S&P starts to have a bit of a wobble, post the uh, options expiration, and that would feed into this, uh, this Aussie scenario, also uh, taking its cue from the, uh, from the S&P. Uh, couple more here, let's have a look. Aussie Yen, um, back into its resistance area again, this, this whilst we hold 84.48 as resistance, we have an 81.32 downside objective um, if we take if, if we take this level out, then the the other thing we want to pay attention to is the equality objective, which would actually put us back in for a potential double top scenario here. So a couple of key areas to keep an eye on: the double top, or if we roll over here, then I still think we can take a look at eighty one thirty two. Aussie Swiss saw a nice pop yesterday, um, coming into some trend line resistance here now. So if we can take that out, if we can take that trend line out, then, uh, then this could move higher. But if we fail here at the trend line and roll over, suggesting this is a false break to the upside, bearish reversal patterns have a, an open downside target at 69.53 versus 72 swing high. Aussie CAD, similar story here, has come right into its corrective objective. And, uh, and we'll see if these roll over uh, in the coming days. If they can't take out the equality objective here at uh, 96.88, then, uh, then that sets up for another leg to the downside. Aussie Kiwi, whilst we hold 108.76, watch for 107.27. Uh, 
let's take a look at the Kiwi. The Kiwi has done the same thing. It's come into its equality objective here. Well, we've exceeded it slightly, but like I say, watch these candle closes tonight because we're seeing a bit of supply here. Uh, back retesting the monthly pivot from below. So if we roll over here, then uh, there's still a downside objective open here versus the 72.70 swing high at 69.02. Quickly look, uh, nothing in that one. Kiwi Swiss set up nicely yesterday, but again has come straight into that trend line resistance, and we're seeing a little little bit of uh, supply coming into the market. So if you're in this, certainly you want to be rolling your stops up to uh, to risk free now. And we'll see if uh, if we can take it. If we can take out the trend line, then uh, then certainly there's a upside potential here to take out the prior cycle high, the, the wave three high, 67.66, but has to get through this resistance area to confirm. So that's uh, those are the charts I'm watching where I see opportunities developing. Pay close attention to uh, where we close the week. Certainly watch these equity indexes post the options expiration tomorrow. If we see some weakness coming into the close uh, tomorrow, then we want to be starting to think about the, a, a little bit of dollar strength coming in to correct some of the recent weakness. And uh, certainly some of these commodity FX pairs, the Euro uh, are, ones to, uh, are ones to watch. Are there any questions? Okay. Hi, Mishek. Hello, Mishek, can you hear me? Hello, Mishek. Yeah, hello, can you hear me? I can indeed, how are you um, yeah, doing? I'm doing fine. So these questions aren't specifically regarding the charts that you've shown, but I've got a couple of questions regarding uh, the strategy that I'm back testing right now. So if you can just help me with that. So just starting off with yeah. Um, so for the core swing strategy, in terms of continuation trades, right? Um, obviously you've got your it's got to be trading above or below like seventy five or twenty, and then you have to have your signal candle as well. But in terms of uh, entering these positions, like what what if they're like trading around the central tendency, like because sometimes I do enter those positions when I'm back testing and they just go completely against me. So like, is there something else like significant levels that I could be using to identify if that's a viable? What, 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 will, what will greatly improve the um, continuation is if you, are, if you have, uh, if you use the central tendency on the 20 period look back on the daily time frame, yeah. to basically give you a read on what the weekly trend is. Okay. okay, so for example here, where we get this rotation up into the high, we pull back into the central tendency. Central tendency is green, yeah. so that's telling us that the, the trend is up. The monthly trend is, is green, and then once we get that first rotation from the five period VWAP, mm -hmm. also green, mm -hmm. that gives us almost a triple com confirmation that we're, you know, the trend is still intact. Okay. And you can also see here, as we pull back, we're really just pulling back into these prior highs uh -huh. and they act as support. Yeah. So you can think in terms of basic support and resistance to add additional confirmation. Um, but more the, the key, really what you want to be paying attention to is the orientation of the VWAPs. Okay. Wow. So they're, 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 going to get, they're going to be the best indicator in terms of confirming the trend. We've also got a bullish psych signal down here. Yeah. And we've got the bullish uh, weekly time frame RSI stochastic, yeah. and we get a bullish uh, reversal here in terms of the near term RSI stochastic. Does that make sense? Yeah. And also, like um, around these significant levels, so I, I usually draw trend lines uh, like yearly, so like a year back, so like significant levels around those um, around those levels. So how would you go about it? Because sometimes um, price there's like strong upside momentum and then I get a signal for a short from my swing strategy and then I enter that trade and it just goes completely against me in that as well. Would you like yeah. wait, I, I, wait to play you on? Certainly, you certainly, to my mind, um, when you're thinking, the, the way the strategies are broken down are basically to teach each 
section independently so you can gain an understanding of how each component works but what you want to ultimately do to, to in terms of trading them successfully is combine them yeah so the, the major filter uh for trading a, for, for trading a, a correction or a mean reversion trade is you have to have divergence okay. so if you don't have divergence in terms of momentum then you should just pass on trading you know trying to uh trade against the trend and equally, you should be able to define once you've once you've learned how to, to look at the, the market structure. If you're going to be trade, if you're going to be fading a trend, you want to be able to identify whether or not there's a you're at a potential wave five high or wave three high. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Last question. But certainly, as a, as, a, as, a, as a basic component, you want to make sure if you're going to if you're going to take a swing against the trends that you've got decent divergence. Okay. And also, last question. This one was for the divergence strategy. Um, I'll put it on Skype as well. It was the for, for the divergence strategy. So, like, let's say you've got a new swing low, and then that tests the support band, but then the prior low that it just took out does that have to test the support band as well for it to be like a divergent setup yeah yeah i mean this is this is something i i i understand i can understand what you're saying conceptually yeah. you don't you i i personally don't use divergence in corrective moves so i'm only interested in looking at divergence into a, a new high like this yeah yeah if you're talking about divergence here I find it less reliable to be looking at divergence in corrective phases. Okay. Okay. No worries. Does that make sense? Okay. Got it. Thank you. I'm, I'm always paying attention to divergence in terms of the, the current trend, not in terms of the correction. What I'm looking for in terms of the correction is the equal legs. Okay. So can I, can I identify an equality objective uh, for price to correct? Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yep, cheers. Good stuff. Thanks for the questions, Michel. Uh, any other questions? If there aren't, if you don't have a question, type an N in the chat box. It's uh, just as useful so that I know we're all on the uh, on the same page and I can wrap this, uh, this session up here. Good stuff. Okay, I'll, uh, I'm going to close this one out and we'll reconvene at the same time next week. Have a great weekend, everyone.